Vlin, they... I can't find the words. It's such a foreign life cycle, or perhaps not. They launch themselves across the expanses of space, preserved for eons, until at last their technology arcs can hone in and carry them to a new home. They have no connection with their predecessors, but in spite of this, perhaps because of this, they have amazing recollections of their history. Their stories are epic, reaching back through the eons. Unlike many of us who were abducted, they were abducted as a whole. Their scoop moved an entire facility that was about to be annihilated. I have come to believe that they perhaps, perhaps more than any of us, have a deeper understanding of whatever their strange system is that we find ourselves in. I need to write this down. We buried Ji Eun today. This place never really agreed with her, kept her herself mostly depressed and downcast. Anyway, I, I digress. I stayed after the brief words were spoken. I was the last to leave. I wandered to the dome, as I often do, and looked out at the undulating, saurian weirdness beyond the cell wall. Movement ca caught my eye. Now, on very rare occasions, we've seen Mofang scrambling about in the distance, but there have been fewer and fewer sightings over the years. So that is... We're on... <sighs> Are we on the other species' planets? Were we kind of swapped? I don't know. But before me was a tall, haggard Mofang running desperately, almost directly towards me from one of the distant structures. It, I still can't tell, the gender got closer and closer. I thought it would see me and stop or turn around or be curious about this strange dome in our world inside it, but it continued running quickly, almost directly to my position. I was frozen in place with curiosity until my reflexes took over at the last moment and I leapt out of the way, but rather than it hit the dome and fall backward or come through and into Hunrath, the dome flashed its familiar tone and the Mofang vanished. It was stunned for a bit, but I retrieved my wits and stepped into the dome myself to quickly get to the other side. After getting through, I immediately turned around and saw the Mofang outside on the other side of the dome, still running away from whatever it feared, but as if it had no sense of passing through the, around the dome. I think that's what this is, is we were scooped up and put on another planet. Since we're sisters with the Mofang, we were put on the Mofang planet. That's why the outside is different on each one, so the... the the Mofang's planet looks like that. I haven't been to the Mofang's planet yet. I think I'll know now. But the the inhabitants of that planet have no idea that the domes exist on their planets. They could just pass right through it. Why? As surprising as the event was, it did serve to settle a few things in my mind. Now, I always wondered how no one on Earth noticed what replaced this chunk of Arizona we have here. I've got to vent. Again. There are those who argue with me. Over and over, I demonstrate that in almost every case, whatever process was that brought us here, it occurred at a pivotal moment. They tell their stories, and they still can't admit that the abduction actually saved each of us, all of us. What is it in human nature that grasps so strongly to the past that we blame our saviors for stealing it from us? Okay, just one more event before bed. <laughs> if each of us was individually saved from something, then maybe all of us were corporately saved from something larger. Can we really be sure what's left? What was I saved from, though? I was just walking through the forest. I don't know. And this, the arrivers come from various places and times. Thank you. That, that I had that question for a long time since I got here. Sarah got here almost 15 years ago from the year 2055. And v Wiesel, is that how you say that? Got here two and a half years ago from 1942. What does that mean? Time here is shuffled and chaotic compared to Earth. What state is Earth in right now? When is Earth right now? It's 3.15 a.m. And I feel compelled to journal this craziness. After spending most of yesterday meditating with Yaria, and then most of it this evening discussing the nature of these worlds with CW, oh, this isn't CW, crap, well, I'm committed, I had just a sip of infamous Hunrath hooch and collapsed in my chair. 
Well, I just awoke from a dream. I'm not one who puts a lot of credibility in dreams, but maybe the Arya were able to move something in me to understand, or possibly... Because of the intense discussion, my subconscious mind was triggered to be able to sort out some logical connections. Or maybe it was the hooch. The dream? It was... A, I was tending a garden, an immense garden. And it wasn't for food or flowers. It was just about the health of the garden. I kept working and working to control it, and contain it, and make it healthier, but the garden seemed to fight me at every turn. And after what seemed like days of work, I finally gave up in frustration. And as I stood there, doing nothing, the garden flourished before my eyes, growing and spreading in every direction. Because, I realized, the system that the plants were based on was not about me shaping and controlling. The natural system of plants is healthier when they are out of control when they are free to spread and intermingle and cross-pollinate and mutate. Now, from a human point of view, that may not provide what I want. I get smaller fruit and smaller flowers and untidiness, but from the point of view of the plants, they grow stronger and much more resilient and resistant. The more they are scattered, the higher their odds of surviving. And now that I contemplate, I realize that even the individual plant seeds may not appreciate the benefits of what's happening. They are torn far from their origins, forced into situations that seem extreme, possibly even destroyed by these new environments, but for the seeds that survive. Ah, the seeds that survive. Now that's where real growth, strength, and abundance comes from. It's so beautiful and terrifying. Beyond the beauty of it all is a system and structure that defies understanding. Okay, what if this is all a natural process? There are signs of something behind it all, but well-hidden signs. So, well, if I look at all this, the cell, the tree, the water, the seeds, the hub, the health, even the abductions, well, there seems to be a grand system or a plan. The plan doesn't take me into account. It is unemotionally intent on the health of something much bigger. That may hurt my feelings, but, well... What am I in the entire scheme of the universe? I have no idea what, if anything, might have put this process into motion, but that is irrelevant. Tomorrow I will talk with CW. He could be swayed from his battery plan. I really don't journal much. I came to write this down because I am distraught, and as I contemplate the plan that I have set in motion, I realize that I have become the destroyer of worlds. I sat down to write to seek some cathartic tranquilization. And I realized the last thing I journaled was some esoteric, beautiful philosophy about letting this garden grow, not so reaffirming or calming. But nevertheless, here is my reasoning because I must write this down. Simply, it's us or them. Complexly, it. If this is some kind of garden and we're the plants or seeds or whatever, well, some of us have gotten together and decided that we're the better choice to survive. If the others have unliterally decided that we all won't survive. I am more fit, damn it. This is not me. I want to be calm and garden or ungarden or grow or... <sighs> what gives one species the right to destroy another species? Who gets to choose? Do I just lay down and die because the more aggressive species thinks they're better, more powerful? What brutal scale do I use to measure the good of some against the life of others? Does love ever destroy in order to help more survive? To help love itself to survive? Does that even make sense? Can I kill because I think it will bring about more love? What if I'm not even capable of understanding the situation? of hate versus love. Maybe I'm the hater. I, do I generate this love, delusion, to help me maintain my sanity in light of a choice I have to make? My god, it's too much. If these are just my walls of delusion, then I choose to live within them. I am a seed, scattered by the wind. But I will not simply be trampled. I will kick and scream and survive. May God have mercy on my soul. All right, so that brings to light a lot of what's going on here. So the decision for whatever this war is, we're not really... Oh, that's cool looking. 
That's a cool looking pair of scissors. Wait, what was that? There's initials on that. Is it JW? Or... Yeah, JW. Whatever. Um, so, they were experimenting earlier in that journal. But, um... It was actually causing harm to the trees. Whether they moved away from that or not, we don't know. Ooh, jewels. But, um... Later on, it seems... I think, like the Mofang decided uh, they would survive over us. So I don't know if that means... Yeah, that's that's nice. That's, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that means um, we actually went to war with just the Mofang or if the other species helped. Or in this case, I don't even think Cecil would know this since he's been stuck in his vault. Maybe the Mofang won. No way of knowing. The hell is that thing? Okay. That's nice. I don't think any of those have anything to do with anything, but okay. That's a lot of backer reward items. What is that? Okay. Is that... That's Gurr with a teddy bear. Hey Gurr, how you doing? Uh, see the head there. No tuna fish! I don't agree. You should always have tuna fish. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's how I came in here. So, this is just uh, the lady's place that. I forgot their name. She was the one that made contact with the polyarchs. Well, I can get in here now. Wait. What? Could I open that this entire time? Strange. I'm going to close it up because I don't need to go in there, but okay. Once I open that up, I could have just come in here. Wow. That's brain just whoosh, I exploded all over the place. Actually, I want to go out this way. I'm going to leave this here. Because that might have been blocking something on the Polyarch's planet. And I'm going to come over here and I want to rotate this. I got to figure out, do I want the original sphere back in its original position? Or do I need to do something different? And then I still have the number machine that's now sideways! That makes it easier. Alright, I need to find the position of what it is now. And move it a quarter. Let's see, since they're... One, two, three... Four, five, oh, it's only it's in six, not eights. Okay. Because if I move this and it goes over there, it's into six. Okay. That, th these will help me out a lot, honestly. I think of things spatially, not mathematically, unfortunately. So when you add things like that, it makes it a lot easier for me to think. And also that motorcycle will, too. So that should move it one-sixth. Which means it's right here. Okay, so th these will always line up with something. Okay, I'm trying to think of the orient. I think I'm going to have to go back to the other planet. Hmm. All right, I want to keep that out because I can also check that out when I go to the other planet. And I need to find out what the position I am in when I come back from there so I'll know how many how many uh, notches I need to turn the uh, sphere. Sounds like a plan? I mean, I guess it's a plan. It might not be. I don't always come up with good plans. I, I rarely come up with good plans. That's a depressing thought. But true. Get down here. Come here. 